I believe that digital mass surveillance is neither effective nor necessary for security in any state. And much to the contrary, I think it weakens democracy. Freedom of expression is the protection of an individual to seek and receive information or to impart and disseminate information in an oral way, a written way, or through any technology or any means at their disposal. Now, when it was drafted, and even beginning with the Universal Declaration in 48, no one knew about internet, but they were wise enough to foresee that new technologies were coming. And these new technologies have accelerated the process and widened the process of communication. What internet brought new was the interactive means of communication, where you can send a message and a million people can receive it, but they can also answer in real time. Or they can exchange that message, or they can forward the message, or they can discuss the message. And this brought a whole new dimension to communication. So today, defending internet is a way to defend the mechanism in which we will exercise the right to freedom of expression. I would say the most important mechanism in which we exercise freedom of expression. So if defending a right, and in this case, applying criminal law or applying some form of investigation or national security was absolutely necessary, a court can order that. And what was ordered before for traditional forms of mail or a telephone call can today be ordered digitally for internet. But today, the technology allows you to map out a region and to intervene the communications of an entire region. So you can intervene the communications of a city, of a province, or of a country, all together. And the discussion we ended up in, in Geneva was whether mass surveillance is legitimate or not. And I can advance. My position is no. Because mass surveillance does not explain the purpose. Targeted surveillance always has a purpose. The purpose of guaranteeing security or finding out some crucial information for national security or for the criminal investigation. But if you're just doing blanket surveillance, then what you're generating is an overpowering state. You don't want the powers of the state to exercise a limitless uh, excess uh, of their, their function and their role. So you create absolute power. And yes, today is done in the name of national security or anti-terrorism, but tomorrow it can be done for political reasons is to silence the opposition inevitably those in power may fall into temptation. Ten years ago, mass surveillance was synonymous with countries like Bahrain, China, Iran, Syria, Vietnam. But times have changed. Since Snowden and WikiLeaks, we have known that the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are becoming bigger and bigger in eavesdropping on people in their Five Eyes Corporation. But now, states like Russia, Turkey, Ukraine, and Angola are putting their antennas up for mass surveillance. And this seems not to be the end of it. Countries like Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Japan, South Korea, Thailand, and Singapore are all cooperating with NSA. Mass surveillance seems to be an almost unstoppable trend. It will not take long before everyone is watching everyone. Where did we hear that before? 1984. Surveillance can be legal and legitimate if in, in a democratic society, if you do it with legal democratic procedures through the law. But it is not legal and non-democratic, and as a matter of fact, it will erode the democratic process if it is done just massively and arbitrarily, and especially if there is no serious process of authorization. You cannot have security forces decide by themselves, upon themselves, what to monitor and when they want to monitor it. There always has to be an outside authority of the state 
to authorize it and to monitor it, I think. Uh, Morocco bought a software called Eagle. What it does is that it intercepts every bit of communication. It could be email, it could be phone calls, it could be SMS, text messages. And uh, it allows the government actually to uh, uh, intercept uh, those c communications and, and store and analyze the data and the metadata, something you know, the, the data about data. Uh, and it kind of um, operates on the scale of a whole country. Morocco is a country with a 32 million uh, population. That's something within the scope of, of that kind of software. The excuse given uh, by officials uh, is terrorism and cyber criminality. You begin to wonder about, uh, you know, the, the real use of this kind of software. It's, we don't know, I mean, uh, the, 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 there was no public debate about that. We don't know who operates those, uh, uh, these, these kind of systems. We don't know whether there is, there is a judicial supervision. And my guess is that uh, this allows, when you don't have checks and balances, when you don't have transparency, you have the recipe for the abuse of power that you, we've seen even in democratic countries like the US as Snowden revelations showed. What, what people call metadata is the fact that they're, they say they're not monitoring the content, they're monitoring the trajectory, meaning the origin and the end of a communication. So who communicated with whom? And that in itself gives you a net of communications. So in a way, they, they, it's been said that metadata is not really surveillance because they're not listening to the substance, to the content of that communication. They don't know what was said, but they do know that if one person has communicated frequently, for instance, with a particular region of the world. And if that is a dangerous region of the world, then that will immediately arise some suspicion over this person because of those communications to that part of the world. If that in a small world is a consideration, one could say that part of the privacy includes not only what I say, but whom I relate to. The chilling effect, one could say, is a synonymous of intimidation. There are intimidating events, something that brings us to self-censorship. And in some countries, um, I mean, even on a private life, if you know that if you speak out, you may be fired from your job, well, you were contain yourself, especially if you have a public uh, position as a civil servant. You will not be willing to criticize your superiors or to denounce corruption, for instance. So this is a chilling effect because it will have uh, an intimidation element and people will have be more difficult for them to be brave enough to overcome that and speak out. Surveillance can be legitimate if it is done in a democratic and legal way. But mass surveillance always will violate the principle of proportionality and necessity and therefore has no justification.